it is time for mm, yeah, pensive, self-reflective, mm, sorry, uh, apologetic power rankings. So many critics, these pundits. I absolutely adore them, lads. I have unbelievable time from, but they're, they're a great bunch, but it's not acceptable. I'd like to play the hard man when, when they're on it. It's not very pleasant when you're trying to manage a team. All you're looking for is a bit of civility and a bit of decency, but they just dismiss you like, like you, you know, you have nothing to do with the bloody occasion. All right. I said an apologetic version of the power rankings here on. A vindicated version of the power. The power rankings are always in vindicated form because everything is ultimately proven to be correct. Albert Reynolds came out and uh, and won like a euro or a penny or something in a in a libel action against the Sunday Times. And he's like, vindicated, vindicated. Everybody's like, really? Because normally everybody gets like millions when they're uh, vindicated in this situation. You're a bit of, you're did, the... Did or, did or did he not earn a profit as a result of that libel action. I mean, I'd say the legal fees might have resulted in... All I'm seeing is a plus in the column, and that plus, it doesn't matter what the magnitude is, and that's the way the power rankings are every single week in full-on Albert Reynolds post court case mode. At 32, still, is uh, Waterford. Indicated. Uh, at Still, at 31, is Carlo. So we've gone through two teams here that have uh, proven my point of vindication. Uh, forget about all the, the red and the green that you're going to see here and all the movement that we uh, are now about to go through. But uh, London are down into 30th. Leash, the big fallers this week. One of the big fallers this week, down to 29th. It's been a terrible season for them so far. Billy Sheehan looked absolutely despondent after their defeat at the weekend. They obviously got relegated to Division 4 and they go into the Talzin Cup. Uh, 28 is Sligo. Uh, they had a win against New York, but as we'll get to in a moment, there's been a couple of risers from the uh, first page. So Leitrim stayed put at 27th. They had a win against Lo- London since we last did our last uh, update in the power rankings. Longford are yet to play there in 26th. Antrim were beaten by 13 points against Cavan last weekend. A really impressive performance from Cavan. They're down to 25th. And then Offaly, sorry, Offaly are the biggest fallers this week. They're down to 24th, plummeting after getting beaten by Wexford. Not too many people would have seen that coming, despite the fact that Offaly did have injuries, of course, and, and were down a couple of players. Uh, I think it was more to do with the fact that Wexford weren't actually great in the National League this year, somehow pulling out that result. They were at home, and they're up there to 23rd place, up seven places to 23rd. Wow. Um, they're the they're, biggest risers. They would be, yes. I think so. I think they are. Um, they are, yeah. Um, like, th- this... I, I'm not sure too many people would have called this like they said that they had great confidence themselves and as I say like he didn't necessarily point them out during the league and say there's a team who's going to cause an upset like that maybe because they were in a division with Cavan and Tipperary and that kind of battened down any opportunity for, for there to be a bit of a bolter from the traditional division four teams but I, I think that they've, that they've just timed their run absolutely perfectly even in comparison to this time last year like you look at someone like Ben Brosnan, I know he's got a, a lot of attention because he's been around for so long, but he scored 1-8. He wasn't there for the Dublin game last year and he was saying in the aftermath that he was just hoping all year, for the last 12 months, let's just get Dublin again, let's get Dublin again, let's get Dublin again. And his 1-8 at the weekend means that they're getting Dublin again and he's getting the opportunity to play them again. And they've been pretty straight up about it. They've literally said in the aftermath, it could have been Brosnan or maybe it was their manager who said, yeah, Dublin aren't as good as they were last year. So, now, it wasn't a close one thing. What was it? Was it six to eight points or something like that? I don't have the numbers in front of me. But it felt close. It felt like the beginning of a Dublin decline last year. And that'll be an interesting subtext going into this game this weekend. And Wexford, as I say, are at home. 15 uh, points to seven points. So, eight points, okay. Uh, so, it was over double scores, to be fair. So, not, not exactly a close one thing, as I say. But, like, it's... It, it, Wexford will look at that game with a bit more appetite than they would have done six, three four years ago. Uh, Wicklow are the other risers obviously uh, this week after their win against Leash this is something that was less surprising because of the opposition that Wicklow were up against I know Offaly did get relegated as did did Leash but Offaly were obviously coming from a much higher base um, Kevin Quinn got his hat-trick against Leash in that game this was their first win against Leash since 1986 Mees might be a little bit worried at the weekend I, again I think it's not to the same magnitude as Dublin but I think Mees will be uh, just fine this weekend they're at home as well in, this game is taking place in Navin but uh, you just don't know when you've got these two teams coming in off the, the back of some huge wins. So Wexford Wicklow, the big risers. There's been 
bit of chaos above that. So uh, teams that are getting beaten are rising, teams that are winning are dropping and all that sort of stuff because uh, there's been a few boulders, as you can imagine. Uh, Fermanagh are in at 21st. They're out of the championship. They lost to Tyrone. Down are in at 20th. They're yet to play in the championship. Westmeath also yet to play in at 19th. Uh, Tip and Limerick also yet to play. They're in at 18th and 17th, respectively. And then Cork in at 16th. They've been leapfrogged. They've, of course, yet to play. They're playing at Parky Rain against Kerry on the 7th of May. And Louth have gone above them. Right. This has been a, a hell of a spring for them. Like, Mickey Hart taking over was always a bit of a, a headline grabbing thing and you weren't quite sure what he was going to do with them in, in season one but season two it seems that they've gone to a whole other level he's obviously got the players to work with he's got a great set of forwards and of course Samuel Roy is the guy who's taken most of the attention 2-5 at the weekend 5.56 in league and championship so far this year he was asked after the game if he was happy with his tally his answer no he wanted more this guy is hungry for points and goals he, th- he thought he had a few more opportunities he set up I think 1-1 as well on top of that I'm telling you I don't know I, I don't know how it didn't move the needle yesterday but I'm <laughs> the loud plus 5 at uh, a touch over evens well, that, that I think, the, the the handicap is definitely something worth looking at. I do think Kildare will win at the weekend, but it's it's a gamer. Is it on, is it on TV? Uh, game? I presume because it's Sunday. on Sunday. So I presume not. Uh, but that's that's something you would you would pay to watch for sure, uh, at least even after the hurling to watch the full thing back because, yeah, I think I think that five points is an interesting one to, to look at. Like when I mentioned the, the fours that they have as well, the, like it's worth paying the admission fee to see Connor Grimes and Kieran Byrne who've been constant figures throughout this season as well for, for Loud in, in that forward line and that's probably what's helping Mulroy here a bit as well is that he does have players around him that are excellent so this is not this sort of you know Roy the Rovers one man team he's been brilliant he's been arguably the well, I think he has been the, the top scoring forward so far this year so um, that's that, that that just kind of marks where they're at like it was a 15 point win against Carlo yeah like, I mean, <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's the level of the hammering we've seen dished out here so that's not becoming of a team who who are kind of like a division 3 team um, this says to me that Lau they're a team who got promoted to division 2 and are planning on staying there it's in Tullamore I don't like it Kildare hey Tullamore I don't like it I don't like the build up to this I don't like the I don't like the ghosts no thanks what about Paul Meskell's shorts though well Paul Meskell's shorts might be enough to swing it in our favour is that not a good omen I'm telling you they should be the best selling GAA item in the history of every, anything and the fact that I mean, I, they, they, there's like room to cash in here. He did a little message for a walk recently, and it, it didn't, it didn't get any pop. And here he is at Coachella, in the shorts, his signature look. Coachella looks crap, but I guess Paul Mescal was. Uh, was it wasn't a, even really the Versace version; it was actually the O'Neill's version, wasn't it? It was genuine Kildare GA shorts. But the thing is, he like is he sending out a message to Kildare to wish come them luck? Come and get me, come and get me, come and get me, because he doesn't always wear Kildare shorts. Sometimes he wears the Versace ones, does he? Uh, Gucci wasn't it? Who did it? Was it? Well, but I, I don't think so. No, I think I it's, it's always genuine. Yeah, like he was, he did play minor. Like he's got a lot of free GA shorts. Well, three or four anyway left. De- well, definitely. But then, uh, there was def- different ones. But there was there, there, like whenever he's out in public wearing GA shorts, the photo necessarily goes viral. So uh, I haven't seen him. I haven't seen the, these Kildare ones too often. So I'm chalking that down as the main reason why Kildare are going to win this weekend. Clare in at fourteenth. They haven't played. Cavan have leapfrogged them because they were so good at the weekend. Uh, a few people actually picked against them or maybe were nervous for Cavan's prospects, but it seems that Division 4 hasn't done them a whole pile of harm. They do have Donegal in the next round. It'll be a hell of a story if they manage to beat Donegal and therefore qualify themselves for the All-Ireland Championship for Sam Maguire and not uh, fall into the Talzin Cup. Paddy Lynch kicked eight points for them on his championship ga- debut at the weekend. And it feels like stories like that just go under the radar because of the division in which they're playing National League football so you're kind of happening upon these stories in the championship on the bigger stage he also set up Grove McKiernan's goal and a 13 point win against Antrim at the weekend again that I, same same for that Cavan plus 5 yeah uh, where, do you know where that game is on do you have it handy um, do goal written down first where it is that, that game was in the athletic rounds in 2020 I think wasn't it that Ulster final uh, so maybe the, the final is the one that it goes neutral and then it's home away agreements outside of that I don't know but um, if, if, if Kevin are at home you'd, you'd definitely look at that uh, Meath stay put at number 12 Derry stay put at number 11 both of those teams yet to play and then Kildare as we've mentioned get their championship underway this weekend they start our top 10 they're down a place because we obviously have a riser coming up Ross Common down to number 9 they're yet to play obviously in this year's championship Armagh uh, down to 8th I think that maybe they'd been dropping in these power rankings 
at the end of the league. That's why they're the most correct vindicated power rankings. The the trend, the Armagh trend has just uh, continued and they're down one place. You're, you're grandfathering in your correctness here, which is completely incorrect. Where are Armagh second at one point in these? After the first... They beat the Dubs in Croke Park. Yeah, so they were second and they've fallen to eighth. Were they second? I'm not sure if they were second. They were definitely top three or four. Is this the highest goal they've ever been this season? This season. Operating in Division 2, they've been lingering in around the top dozen and they're up to seventh. This is obviously going to be the thing that annoys people the most, I would suggest. I'm not going to uh, try and deny that. Galway not being above Mayo. Uh, Monaghan in at number six. And uh, Mayo have dropped. They've dropped a couple of places down to number five. So Mayo have dropped. Galway have risen. But I'm just putting the situation of Galway leapfrogging Mayo in these rankings on ice for the moment. Why? If, if Galway do win the Connacht Championship and if... And if Galway Ma- go to Mayo, Fortress Mayo, mm-hmm. Mayo unveiling the new pitch for the first time. Yeah. Don't seem not wasn't great for them. Uh, before a supposedly feverish home crowd and absolutely spanked them for 68 minutes. Yeah. All right. And they nearly collapsed over the line. But they, but they were like a... Um, they were like a long distance runner who goes into muscle spasm at the line but who's like streets and streets ahead just a little bit of muscle spasm at the end and then they fall over the line and they still not ahead of them in the power rankings I think that there's a, a chance that this is the start of real progress for Galway the, the awakening of a sleeping giant I think is how Kevin McStay puts it in the Irish Times this morning but I, I, I just think that that's a chance. I'm, I'm not 100% sure yet that they are the dominant team in Connacht in an All-Ireland sense. Like, you look at 2016, Galway went to Castlebar and they won. 2018, Galway go to Castlebar and they win. This is the third consecutive time they've gone to Castlebar and they've won. Now, I accept in 2018, they got further than Mayo in the All-Ireland Championship. But you compare their performance in the All-Ireland semi-final that year to, say, Mayo in the final the previous year against Dublin and Mayo in the final the previous year against Dublin. That I, I don't think you can make an argument that Galway around that era were a better team than Mayo. So those wins in Castle Bar were essentially this irrelevant. This seems different. Well, see, that's the thing. I'm, I'm, I'm not exactly 100% sure if that's the case. I, I will 100%... I, I, there's every chance I'll be changing my tune on that in a while, but I just want to see more. I just want to see more. I just want to see this Galway team win this championship, get, beat Roscommon after losing to them twice. Do you not think that there's something weird about Galway in that they seem to have the most natural footballers outside of Kerry? That actually their ability to produce half-backs and half-forwards who can solo the ball at the same pace they run at and who are excellent kickers is unparalleled apart from Kerry. That they're, they're a team who needs to create athletes as opposed to a team who needs to create footballers. Everybody else, or the whole rest of the country, is like, we've got athletes, let's turn them into footballers. With Galway, it's like, we have these amazing footballers, two-footed, half the team seems two-footed. And they have vision and they have everything else, but they they like, they like were flaky as bejesus over the last decade. Yeah, You could not trust them. This year, all of their main players seem to be fit. Now, we don't know what's going to happen over the next few weeks. That might, and the the squad depth could be paper thin. But for the first time in a long time, everybody seems to be fit. And their manager stopped banging on about, oh, this is traditional Galway style. And he battened down the hatches. Maybe that's to do with Keenan. Maybe it's to do with Divoli having a, a more of a say. But it seems like they finally cottoned on to the fact that, like, you need a defensive structure. And that's actually really more important for a team who has the natural footballers that they have. And so it was only their flakiness that I thought that was going to prevent them from getting here. But they seemed not to be flaky at the weekend. They were pretty flaky for the last five minutes, but it didn't cost them. It almost did. And I, I think that there's a bit of, a small bit of scoreboard journalism going on there. But That's all right, the scoreboard counts. It does, but, you, I, but what I was just about to say, in fairness, is that you could also use that uh, in favour of Mayo as well. You know, the, the Mayo argument, of, oh, they only lost by a point, when in actual fact they were down by so much at the end. So was, I think maybe if you discard that for a sec, if we just dig down a little bit deeper into like some of the the stats like uh, Mayo had 32 shots to Galway's 24 the efficiency rate was completely different though Galway 62% Mayo 50% uh, from play then it was Mayo 20, 22 um, shots Galway 20 shots so that efficiency rate from free taking was is one of the real problems here Galway went 100% and, and Mayo was 70% so I'm not sure is that something that Mayo fixed over the next little while I think from play it's something they have to fix it did cost them against their own in last year's All-Ireland final it felt so maybe this is a theme that that Horn has really tried to address and has been unable to do so. The other thing is that Mayo did 
win more turnovers than Galway. Like uh, you, you can't really look at the kickouts as as a sign of, of anything to read into figures wise because Mayo or Galway dropped off the Mayo kickout, but but Mayo did do well on the on, on the Galway kickout. And there were a number of different factors here that would suggest to me that if they have Henley back, if they have Durkham back, if they've got a fully fit Oshin Mullen, a fully fit Killian O'Connor, a fully fit Dermot O'Connor, they uh, might not. Uh, like you know? th- then I, I would say. But I think there's just so Jordan Flynn. There's just so many players there, but so much doubt about all of them. Like and there's no guarantee that any of those are going to come back. It's like Khan. Not is, all of them, but like the, 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 I would say that there, you could be fairly certain that there is going to be a collection of those players who will be fully fit come the end of the season. Who will be fully fit and peaking? Well, because they might. They're, they're, I mean, who knows who they're going to play in in their next game? But it could be a really good team. It could be a mediocre enough team. And Fair and that's enough. why this that's why this is like a, a, a sort of a higher wire suggestion to say that Mayo were still better than Galway because they could get dumped out next week and this would look like a very foolish thing to say but I, I, I just do think that I, I'm, st- I'm still I thinking think that I, who, who are you backing to go all the I'll, way in the All-Ireland if they're in the same place and, and you're backing Mayo granted they've been given a setback right now and that makes Galway more likely obviously they only have to, they've, they've still got the safety net of going through the qualifiers if they need to but I I'm just Okay so we're, we're at a we're at an All-Ireland semi-final draw stage right and in one pot it's Kerry and in the other pot I have two hot balls and they're, it's uh, Galway and Mayo. Which of these hot balls do you want me to pick out? Well, you could say that the last time Kerry played Galway and Croke Park Galway beat them but I, I still think Mayo are more of a threat in Croke Park. <laughs> they got to the last two All-Ireland finals. That's out today with the, with the available players they have and the level of fitness that we have. Um, Which is what with, you're making the power rankings today. Yeah, no. I you can was, change the power I rankings was, the week before that Mayo play their first round of the qualifiers when we know Flynn is back and Henley's back. Yeah. And I would still, I would still say Mayo are, are a slight more threat if it's like season on the line. You're you're going home. It's in Crow Park. It's full. Uh, like I, I think. Like I, also the other thing about this and Galway deserve huge credit for this is the the way that they set up was Mayo specific. It felt on Sunday. Maybe not. Maybe this is the the system that they deploy over the next little while. But it did feel like the double sweepers was like the kryptonite for Mayo and it, it was the, the, the way to expose how Mayo's one-dimensional attack is going to be something that probably means they're not going to win the All-Ireland but that doesn't mean they can't go very very close to winning it again this year and I'd just be interested to see how Galway cope with I, I guess being favourites in, in this Connacht final which they probably will be if it's going to be themselves against Ross Common uh, and how they cope with that pressure over the next little while and those flair players that you mentioned the skillful players how to unlock them even more like Alright all right, they're your power rankings that's just my uh, current current feeling on, on that. Donegal are up to fourth after their win against Armagh at the weekend. They you were, trust Donegal again? I trust them over the, the next little while, for sure. And Dublin are in green. Why are Dublin in green? Because Mayo have dropped out of the top three. Mayo were third before these. And uh, by default, Dublin have slipped into the top three. Con is back. He's going to play this weekend, according to the back of the Herald. They're fresh from their training camp in Portugal. And the National League is over. It's done. That, that league version of, of Dublin just like that league version of Limerick is done it's dusted and I think there's a, a slight sense of optimism around, around what Dublin are going to do I still think it'll be a massive shock if they didn't win Leinster this year and again we can't really make any predictions with regards to what's going to happen in the quarter final draw Tyrone stay put at number 2 they beat Fermanagh by 7 points in their opening game were they, they good enough to stay at number 2? You're also kind of blah 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 away that because it was inferior opposition that they got sucked into a weird game yeah like I don't think that there was enough about it to, to drop them off that place. I think that they finished the league quite strongly. I think that they finished that game against Fermanagh quite strongly. Like I, I think that uh, seven points made Fermanagh look quite good in the end, even though they played very well for a lot of that first half. I still think Toronto's done enough to stay number two. And Kerry haven't played yet in the championship. They're still in at number one. Is there a possibility that some of the dubs are about to peak? Do you know what age Cor- Cormac Coslow is off the top of your head? 28? He's actually only 27, yeah. He's 28 in, in July by the around the time of the All-Ireland this year um, like it, it, traditionally you would have said the players come into their peak they have the experience and all the know-how and all that kind of stuff around between the ages of 28 and 32 um, he's had a pretty good career so far yeah not bad like Fenton's the same age Kilkenny's the same age they're all 93 aren't they so like they yeah, and, they're all your age right of course yeah it's a slight bit older that's how you know yeah it's a bit older and uh, like I mean the, the, he's, he's 94 the cost low is yeah. oh shit I'm going to be 28 this year uh, the uh, the um, Conroy situation as well at the weekend it's like look at this person who's actually operating at their peak at the age of 32 like I mean does, does a time away from the game injury enforce the course uh, elongate his career a little bit 
I, I don't know like you would have thought it would do the opposite but maybe it's just kind of the freshness that that brings after getting back to the game after a little while out is something that helps him that, like I, I, it's hard to pin down what exactly is the peak for a GA player at the moment considering a lot of those dubs were so good in their early 20s yeah and, and uh, they were coming into a very good situation and now they have to step up and be the absolute leaders of a team and if they were to do that that would be if they were to build a second dynasty I mean it would be an amazing rivalry that they're about to have with Kerry if, uh, if they can hit a second peak and uh, be galvanised so uh, it, that's I think one of the most interesting subplots are, are Tyrone going to be the same as they were are, is that the corpse of Mayo that we saw at the weekend or are they about to rise Lazarus like how did Mayo end up in the league final how, how did that happen they beat Kildare just about and that was enough to get them the points to get through like they beat Dublin like if you if you look, if you look through they beat they beat like they beat Armagh who were going well at the time they lost the carry by just one point in Tralee like I know that they they love that location um like you, you mentioned there the win against Kildare which was significant enough to beat Monaghan in Clonus remember like Mayo did have big wins like this these last two games are not becoming of Mayo in 2022 even I accept that the stakes have got higher and higher over the last. Was there something? Was there some weird complacency about the home venue? Was there something weird going on? Because the the atmosphere was dead. I thought. For and I, look, I wasn't at it. I was watching on TV, but it seemed like they were kind of less into the game than they should have been for the fact that Galway were rolling into town with a big axe to grind. It didn't make any sense. It, it, is it just the qualifiers and the back door? Does that just change the male psyche? A little the urgency. Bit? Like I mean, they. I, they've, it's, it certainly seemed that, it seemed that there was a bit of an urgency about them and it felt like they were under massive pressure against Galway last year now in fairness that Galway game last year like Shane Walsh does go off injured that's a pretty like that's it's Infinity. hugely significant in the, like the, 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 the instant Infinity went off injured and was there, did, did Galway prevent himself from scoring a goal in that was it a double whammy there was some weird thing that happened he, he banged the post or something yeah that, that rings a bell and and then the, the previous year I'm not sure what the mitigating factor was and in fairness Mayo should have had a man sent off for the Shane Walsh thing. Yeah, like or at least black hearted. So like, that, like that, those are definitely factors as well. But I, I do think that's like when Mayo see the fact that there's a qualifier route, they're like, yeah, give me that, give me, give me, the, give me a couple of games in the back door because okay. they just love that. Compco Productions, hello Compco, good morning to you. Uh, New York, why London but no New York? Good point. You can start sticking them in. Yeah, team thirty three. Well, exactly. We, we, the, Talton, the Talton Cup might. Uh, I'm actually not sure how that's going to factor into our power rankings. Is uh, might see a resurgence of a few of those teams. You can do what this the SPL does and separate it into two competitions. Yeah. What a great competition that is. We all pay attention to the bottom six of that. Uh, Willow Callan says, "Awfully, that's our will." Says, "Awfully deserve to drop more places for having our best player of the last 25 years as sub goalkeeper last Sunday." Niall McNamee was sub keeper uh, amidst the injury crisis, uh, or they deserve to uh, have fewer. As a bit of a smaller drop but that is a shocking result for them even notwithstanding the injuries that they have uh, Connor says Mayo will still go further in the championship than Galway and Roscommon will beat Galway in the Connacht final Galway a good team but not as good as Jerry is saying I'm, I'm not saying that yet that they're a great team but they've produced this unbelievable group of footballers and frequently the crops come like mushrooms overnight I just think the skill level they're like Welsh rugby I don't know what I don't know how but there's just a you don't you don't agree well, with this. I, I know exactly how. Like I mean, Galway's a massive county. Galway's got a, a city. That's like Wales is like. I mean, a, is, it, is it a real city? <laughs> like it's Kilkenny City, Waterford City, like, Galway City. Wales feels Tal more bigger. Random. Like I mean, Tal is bigger. Okay, fair, fair enough. Like that's why uh, that's why Dublin are in third. But like I mean, with Wales, like how are you competing with England and France all the time with the massive countries that they have? It's the skill set. It's yeah. it's this weird little. I don't I don't understand. But there's something there that they need to do, be more successful with uh, Galway win all Ireland Mayo don't end of story says Dave uh, who's going to win all Ireland first Galway or Mayo well that's a, that is an entirely different question who's going to win all Ireland first I think yeah. Mayo Mayo no evidence well, there's evidence for that there's evidence for that that's just my opinion that's evidence for that it's just, it is just my opinion I think 10 minutes past 8 that's <laughs> this week's power rankings <laughs>